hello friends welcome back in this video we will see how we can use the custom model for table view and how we can populate the data inside uh, the table view using custom model and mongodb so in my all previous videos i already showed you how you can create the database operation file since we, we are using here I already explained the custom model file and there we already see how you can create custom uh, model using Q abstract table model so since our model is ready now it's time to actually plug that model into our uh, tree view okay so since I already have a basic file which I will run this MongoDB and here we have just simple one single tree uh, sorry table view so let me just quickly get our pre-written code here and there we need few libraries which is from library import database operation and from library import custom model so guys this too is this application level package this is not python level package so this is what we created okay so now since we already added i'm going to remove these two other table view because that is for our just example right okay so let's just go quickly and see one by one what we added here so first thing is we are having a user data and that user data we are getting from mongodb multiple operation let me just comment this and show you self dot user data run this and as you can see that here we have this user data here okay stop next thing is we create a self dot model and this is a like a variable global variable within our app like main file and there from custom model we are actually calling our custom table model class and since this table model required initial data to proceed so we already whatever data we are getting from mongodb uh, database we are providing into our custom model so that custom model will proceed proceed and return some uh, good ui element to populate the data that's it so then we already created some delegates for inline editing that i already explained you in detail in my previous videos so here with that it from in that custom model uh, you're getting the inline delegate and then first you should uh, set the item delegates here right I should use this here first so you have model and then the table view dot set model self dot model so with that we are plugged our model into the table let me just just see at this level if we just plug run and you can see that we are still viewing our stuff here we just won this line so if you have multiple table because all the logics related to model we already covered into our custom model.py so in your main user interface like front end part you no need to do other complicated stuff so that is that's why the view based widgets is very very good uh, to use so there your core logic will not conflict with your so it's very easy to actually maintain these kind of code that's why so with one line you are able to populate but still we need to do uh, assign some delegates and also we need to set some column width and uh, uh, this rows height to actually make it uh, looks good and that is actually not related to model that is related to the front end interface so that's why that part should be covered into the main uh, front end interface file so then we will just provide q line inline delegate so that is 
if I double click here you see this is not showing me the text inside here so then if I enable this inline edit delegate if I run that okay so hey on double click it's not just wipe the entire text so it's showing me uh, okay interesting let's just close that second thing is we need to see the profile picture delegate and that is actually for column that is not for everything because this table view set item delegate is actually uh, setting this uh, delegate to every item but now we want to add something for particular column and that's why we are using set item delegate for column and that column is only one so you need to provide the index of the column and then the column uh, the delegate where which one you are using and actually we no need this line also we can directly use this here because we are not going to use this in future so with that you you just have one line and your code is cleaner okay then we have a context menu and that context menu is something like add and edit let me just on this okay so let's just run that and the context menu is if i run outside the uh, if i don't select anything and if i right click i will see add new data but if i select any uh, row and if i right click i will see two options here and this is this right click option is actually the context menu and i put one logic just because of that it's not showing the remove data option if you haven't select anything because that doesn't make any sense if you don't select anything then how you can delete that okay so context menu for context menu i just created a function and that is actually start with a menu and menu you can get it from qwidgets.qmenu and with that you can create new item inside your context menu with that you can add action you can name the action name like add new data you can set a icon for that so for example i put add icon like plus icon image and remove icon image and to to view the and to show the remove data option if something is selected i use if table view dot selected indexes so there means if any index is selected or if any selected index is found then only show this otherwise just show the first one that's it and then you just put this inside menu execution cursor position and you can just copy paste use it okay so in the end there is few things that we should see is this uh, what this is like uh, i make the vertical header is like a, the height of the row is little bit wider so we can see the picture of the uh, so that we can see the photo in the column much bigger and the second thing is I put the column width of 0 is 30 and the reason is uh, still the photo we want to see in a good way and the third one is the table view dot hide column 0 and this is why we are using because we don't want to show the ID so let me just quickly see here now so here you see uh, now we have much more cleaner we don't have the id one and if we double click we'll see all these options here okay and then if uh, we just remove that or maybe just comment that you see uh, there is an id tab here right this id tab here but this is non-editable nothing to do but we need to keep this because this is very important for uh, interact to interact with our database right if you want to edit then you need this id to actually uh, do something into your database server so but don't show that keep it but don't show that that's why we just hide the column zero and with that the end user we only see the option which is actually required for them no other option is actually visible for the end user so guys this in like here we just go through all this uh, options related to database uh, create custom models and create a QT interface with PySide 
and populate the MongoDB data into this uh, our Qt interface so in the end I want to show you one more thing and that is actually uh, very interesting why you should use views instead of widgets is uh, this one let me just run that okay so guys since from beginning uh, there are many times I already showed you these are three different views and three different views is actually holding the and showing the same model so you no need to create a separate separate function for each model or uh, each view okay so if you edit any place it will update everywhere and that's the beauty you should use model view and controller based operation uh, options so here I use tree uh, table view and you can use any view and any model so even you can use uh, Q string model you can use other model available uh, with uh, QT okay so guys I hope you learned a uh, few things from uh, this video series and I will also uh, create some more videos related to Qt, Python and other cool uh, programming and technology stuff for you guys. So guys, let's wrap this video series. You can get this entire code from my GitHub repository and I will upload this to my GitHub uh, with this all images, everything. So you can just download and run it. You can use it. And you can share it with your friends if they if they are building some application and they need some help to create the some python and qt related stuff using mongodb database all right so thank you guys for watching my video series and i will see you in my next videos goodbye take care